there are few images in the Christian world more universal and more sacred than this. The Madonna doing what any mother would do, feeding her newborn child at her breast. Since the earliest forms of human expression, the breast has been front and center. How long have breasts been on artists' minds and subjects of their works? Well, if we look at the Venus of Willendorf, it's actually 25,000 BC. Beth Rosenberg teaches art history at New York's School of Visual Arts. We see breasts through art history because they're about the world, they're about life. More specifically, they're uniquely designed to feed human babies. Human infants are different from a lot of other mammals in that we don't have this kind of protuberant snout. And if we had really flat mammary glands and a fat infant trying to suckle that, um, you know, it would be like kissing a mirror. It doesn't work very well. Science journalist Florence Williams, who wrote the book on breasts, says that researchers are still scratching their heads over them. Turns out that it's actually a really contentious debate about why breasts evolved, because breasts, as apart from mammary glands, are very unique in the animal kingdom. Other primates only have breasts while they're breastfeeding. But since human breasts typically show up long before they're needed for nursing, Williams says there's disagreement over whether they evolved for food or sex. There's been many decades of scholarship arguing that breasts evolved as sexual signals. And then the feminist scholars came along in the 1970s and 80s and said, well, wait a minute, maybe there's something to do with how breasts actually work that might help women survive or help infants survive. And maybe the interest in breasts on the part of men came later. It's just a little... And it's a lot more than interest. Dolly Parton was famous for attributes other than her acting ability, as was Raquel Welch. And who could forget Halle Berry in that bathing suit? Magnificent view. The bigger-than-life images inevitably left some women feeling inadequate. Most women really don't like their breasts. There's always something wrong. Few people understand this more than Mary Catherine Langhammer, a veteran bra fitter at Houston's Top Drawer Lingerie. They're too big, they're too little, they always want the opposite of what they have. It's no secret that women have been trying to improve on nature for generations. There are bras that you could put all sorts of things in, you know, wire, uh, tissue, metal. There were even bras that you could blow up with a straw to make your breasts look bigger. But permanent breast enlargement was a medical puzzle until a eureka moment 50 years ago in a Texas hospital. There was a doctor in Houston, Texas, who uh, was holding one of these new silicone blood bags. Blood used to be contained in glass. And he was holding a warm bag of blood, and he said, my, that feels good. It feels like a breast. Enter Timmy Jean Lindsay, a divorced mother of six, who went to her doctors to have tattoos removed from her chest. When they pitched her the idea of experimental implants, she said yes, but only if they threw in an ear tuck. The doctors agreed, and in 1962, Timmy Jean became silicone breast implant recipient number one. Across the road from a Houston tank farm, Timmy Jean's house still stands. Come on, we're going in the house. Timmy Jean's still standing, too. And half a century later, the original silicone implants are still inside her. So how did they sell you on it? What did they tell you about it? Well, they didn't, you know, I don't know. I think about that. I think I was just so comfortable with the doctors and, um, uh, I might even had a crush on one or two of them. When the bandages came off, Timmy Jean was a cup size larger, but it was nothing she wanted to flaunt. You didn't show them off? Mm -mm. Why not? Well, I was too timid, I think. So those whistles and those cat calls, you didn't like that? No, I did like it. Oh, yeah, I really liked it, but I didn't want it to go anywhere. And I just wasn't used to all that attention. Are you still happy with how they look? Oh, yeah. I, most of the time now, I go braless. Fifty years on, the implants have hardened, and one has a tear. But Lindsay says she's still a satisfied customer. 
So have you had any health problems that you could say had to do with the implants? No. Uh, I've not had any health problems. Not all implant patients have done as well as Timmy Jean Lindsay. The FDA says that as many as one in five silicone implant recipients needs to have them replaced within 10 years. And even if we don't invite trouble, our breasts go looking for it. The breasts are the most visible part of what women define as being female, and they are the most vulnerable organ to cancer in a woman's body. I've been in practice for over 20 years taking care of women with breast cancer. Dr. Marisa Weiss, a breast cancer specialist at Philadelphia's Lankenau Medical Center, says breast cancer cases have doubled since the 1940s. Yes, we're getting better at finding it, but there's more to it than that. Breasts soak up toxins, and there are a lot more toxins out there now. Hormones in beef and dairy products, preservatives and fragrances that can have hormonal effects. These are things that never used to be out in the environment, and now they're out there everywhere. And our breasts are picking them up. And our breasts are like sponges. They pick up what's out there and hold on to it. And, Dr. Weiss says, women who haven't carried a baby to term have what are considered immature breasts and are more vulnerable to those toxins. When breast gland tissue is immature, it is very suggestible. It's ready to fool around with any host of things that might look like, smell like, taste like hormones that could potentially stimulate extra breast cell growth, which could be unhealthy growth, including the start of a cancer. Of course, having a child, or three, is no guarantee against cancer either. Two years ago, Marisa Weiss found something on her own mammogram. As soon as I saw the films myself, I knew that it was a, a cancer there. You looked at the films yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there a thought that went through your head when you saw that malignancy, when you knew? Grandchildren. I have three kids, and I want to see those grandchildren. Now back at work and cancer-free, Dr. Weiss is a stronger voice than ever for breast cancer prevention. We have to pay attention to this. We have about 1.3 million cases today worldwide. We expect that to double by the year of 2040. The breasts are telling us that we've got a problem out there and we have to listen. We, we can't ignore it. There's too much at stake. For all of our reverence and fascination through the centuries, the breast is still in many ways a mystery, but that too is changing. For her part, Timmy Jean Lindsay, the Texas great-grandmother, says she'll donate her silicone implants someday. Don't want no autopsy, but they can take them. <laughs> they can take the implants. <laughs> but I plan, like I told you, I plan to live to be 100. I don't know what I'll be looking like, but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna try.